Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 2nd. We're bringing you the latest news, making headlines to help you start your day. Breaking overnight, yet another Atlanta nightlife business is the site of a crime scene after another shooting. A security guard killed this time overnight on Lucky Street. CBS 46 Tori Cooper is there now, and she's got the latest details as she starts off today's Morning News Rewind. Good morning, Robin Gravier. Obviously still very preliminary in this homicide investigation, but police tell us it was a 28 year old security guard working right here at the Encore Hookah Lounge last night when early this morning they were trying to get someone out of the Hookah Lounge and a fight ensued. Take a listen to what homicide detectives told us. Upon arrival, officers did in fact locate an individual that had received at least one gunshot wound. That individual was transported to Grady Hospital where he did succumb to his injuries. Uh, we do understand that that individual is a 28 year old male. Now they did tell us that fight happened while they were trying to get that individual out of the hookah lounge. This is the fifth lounge slash nightclub shooting that I have covered just since Monday. They tell us they're still looking for a suspect in this shooting. We also did a little bit of digging right here on this location specifically. Turns out back in May there was a double shooting that occurred out here where two people were injured. Then in January there was a deadly shooting that took place at this hookah lounge when a man left to go to the parking lot to charge his phone. He was approached by three men in a car that was stolen. They shot him on scene and then they dumped that car that was stolen at the Marta station. Obviously, we're going to continue to follow all the developments out here with homicide detectives and see if they can piece together a suspect. Of course, if they do, we'll share it with you right here. Reporting in downtown Atlanta, I'm Tori Cooper, CBS 46 News. Just the latest incident of gun violence. Tori, thank you. And speaking of that, gun violence and gun rights at the center of a controversial bill making its way through the Georgia General Assembly. The constitutional carry bill, which has strong Republican support, would allow Georgians to carry concealed weapons for protection without first getting a license from the state. Our Rebecca Schramm is live at the state capitol this morning. Rebecca, opponents of the bill worry that more guns will lead to more gun violence. Yeah, that's right, Rob. But on the flip side of that, uh, supporters argue that criminals might think twice about targeting someone if they think it's possible that person might be carrying a concealed gun for protection. Take a look because currently you need this if you uh, want to carry a license, uh, want to carry a concealed weapon in Georgia, a Georgia weapons carry license. Senate Bill 319 would do away with the licensing process. So basically anyone who's legally allowed to have a gun could carry a concealed handgun anywhere license holders are currently allowed to carry them. That means guns are still off limits in secure areas of airports or in government buildings that have security at the entrance. Constitutional carry would not be allowed for anyone under the age of 21 for convicted felons or anyone facing a felony charge. During a committee meeting, some Democrats said this would make violent crime even worse. A Republican on the committee addressed that using a bit of sarcasm, arguing that criminals don't follow laws in the first place. The people who are going and getting these permits, it's, it's probably law-abiding citizens, right? They don't have gang sign-up day to go get your concealed carry permit, do they? In a party line vote, the bill passed out of committee. It will now head to the Senate floor for a vote. And if it passes there, it will then head to the House. We're live at the state capitol. Rebecca Schramm, CBS 46 News. Rebecca, thanks for that. Developing right now, at least 10 families no longer have a home because of this fire in DeKalb County. CBS 46's Trace and Bragg is at the Wesley Providence Apartments. Those are in Stonecrest with the details on that. Trace and good morning to you. Good morning, Vera. I'll tell you, we do know that the Red Cross has assisted those 10 families, but take a look behind me. The fire department is still here. This, they've still been monitoring this situation here as earlier, I'd say about an hour ago, we saw some smoke actually leaving the roof nearly 15 hours after this fire sparked here in DeKalb County. Uh, fire investigators are still working to learn exactly what caused a fire that ran through an entire apartment building, leaving only destruction in its wake. The blaze sparked yesterday afternoon around 2.30. Fire crews say the fast moving fire started in a unit on the top floor, then quickly spread across the roof of the building, actually causing part of that roof to collapse all the while creating a truly terrifying situation for neighbors here as 28 units were damaged or destroyed. 
and smoke could be seen for miles, actually. Captain Jason Daniels says it looks like the building did not have firewalls, at least in the roof. He says that allowed the fire to jump from one unit to another. All it has to do is get to the attic, and it, unfortunately, it's very easy for it to run the entire building, uh, which is, looks like what the case is here. Again, you can see, as we mentioned, that roof, a lot of that roof has actually collapsed. You can see it's just a shell of what it was yesterday before the fire. Right now, fire investigators are still working to learn exactly what caused this fire. And again, I'll tell you, about an hour ago, they were still drenching the building with water as we saw some smoke still rising from where that roof once was. Reporting live in Stonecrest, I'm Tracy Bragg, CBS 46 News. Yeah, amazing that they're still working out there. Mm -hmm. Trace, and thanks for that report and that update. Now at 637, we're keeping an eye on today with the stories you need to know. Today, the founder of the far-right militia, Oath Keepers, will face questions from the House Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Stuart Rhodes will appear virtually from Oklahoma, where he's in jail. He's charged with seditious conspiracy. The national debt has surpassed $30 trillion. The country racked up debt quicker than previously forecast once the pandemic hit, and Congress passed a number of bills to provide financial support to families and businesses. Governor Brian Kemp says his campaign committee raised more than $7 million in the seven months. That gives him more than $12 million in cash as he gets ready to seek re-election later in the year. None of Kemp's Republican primary rivals has announced fundraising totals just yet. Home Depot wants to offer jobs to its applicants before they can accept another offer. The Atlanta-based retailer says it is accelerating its hiring process to fight the worker shortage. According to the company, some of its job applicants could receive a job offer within one day of applying. Home Depot is looking to hire more than 100,000 new employees as it heads into the busy spring season. And we're hoping spring is around the corner, but we may know a little bit more later today because it is Groundhog Day, the day Punxsutawney Phil in Pennsylvania tells us how soon spring arrives. You see, if Phil sees his shadow, there's going to be six more weeks of winter. If he does not, spring will arrive soon. Welcome back. It is uh, 643 in the search for the next Supreme Court justice. The Biden administration says former Alabama Senator Doug Jones will serve as a guide for the eventual nominee during the Senate confirmation process. Since President Biden reaffirmed his promise to nominate a black woman to the high court, some Republican lawmakers have cried foul. Jones has a bipartisan record in the Senate and a track record on civil rights. He prosecuted two KKK members involved in the 1963 bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church that left four black girls dead. Well, as we celebrate Black History Month, two Atlanta siblings are the masterminds behind a fashionable way for you to celebrate every day of the year. The Lockett sisters are the beauty and the brains behind Jolie Noir, which means pretty black in French. They built it to represent all shades and sizes of black women and men. CBS 46's Tracy Hutchins has more. If necessity is the mother of invention, meet its sisters, Kim and Keandra Lockett, the dynamic duo who now call Atlanta home, are designers behind the apparel brand Jolie Noir. We saw that there were illustration tees out there that may have had one you know, black person on it. It's like out of maybe 10, there was one black one. And so, and then the size range just wasn't there. So we looked high and low for something like that in other spaces, like non-mainstream spaces and couldn't find it there either. So we decided to create what we didn't see. They've spent almost three years building the brand, designing everything themselves. They have a special message, whether it's through, um, typography or a graphic, the message is that black women are beautiful. Yeah. From the lightest to the darkest, we are beautiful. It was enough to attract the attention of mega retailer Target. Actually, Target reached out to us. <laughs> At first, we didn't believe it. We were like, uh, is this spam? This is not real. <laughs> is, this, is this real? <laughs> you can now find Jolie Noir sweatshirts, joggers, and t-shirts on Target store shelves in Metro Atlanta for Black History Month. It just really shows you that having a major yeah. brand or a major yes behind you, it pulls everybody yeah. in and we're grateful for it. We want to be just as included as uh, an Audrey Hepburn on a t-shirt or a yeah. Marilyn Monroe on a t-shirt. We normalize that black beauty is true beauty as well. Tracy Hutchins, CBS 46 News.
Very cool. Check them out next time you're at Target, right? Trending this morning, Whoopi Goldberg pulled off of the air after comments sparking outrage online. Our Brooks Baptiste joins us with the stories topping your social media feeds this morning. Brooks. Good morning to you guys. Two weeks. That's how long The View co-host Whoopi Goldberg has been suspended after her comments about the Holocaust. The actress and comedian sparked controversy during a conversation on Monday's episode saying the Holocaust was not about race. She apologized for her quote, hurtful and wrong words on Tuesday's show. The president of ABC News releasing a statement saying she wants Goldberg to take those two weeks to learn about the impact of her comments. Well, the Washington football team is set to announce this brand new name this morning, but it might have already been revealed. Take a look at this. A news chopper was flying above FedEx field out in DC. This is when it zoomed in catching a banner that said commanders. So is that the new name? The team did acknowledge that its old name was hurtful and they say that the new brand will not include any nickname linked to a Native American uh, or any imagery. Uh, just yesterday, rescue puppies that you see right here on the screen, they actually got their chance to pick their choice for the football team's name. And yes, it looks like they guessed right. They went for commanders. So maybe they do know everything. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if you're rooting for the Rams or the Bengals. You can bet your Super Bowl party will cost a bit more this year. Shopping lists for the game day feast are likely going to cost between 8 to 14 percent more than they did a year ago. That's according to a new study. Now at the top of the list, you guessed it, meats are right there. All the chicken wings. Also, soda is at the top of that list, said to be more expensive this year. But beer and wine prices are relatively the same. All right, guys, I've got to tell you, chicken price is up about, let's just say chicken wing price is up uh -huh. about 26% right now. Uh, and Rob, I think, said it earlier, that's if you're going to find them. So you may not even right. find your wing. That's true. That, so yes. the, the real question, though, this morning, flats or drums? <clears throat> oh, flats, come on. That's what I'm told come that on. real chicken wing lovers say. Come on. I can't help but just like the ease of the drum. So maybe oh, I'm basic. I don't know. Pizza. Basic. Pizza. Wow. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, this was caught on camera. Two deputies running towards a burning townhouse where two people are trapped. The two victims jumped and the deputies helped buffer their fall. Fortunately, the two victims and their dog are all expected to be okay. Across the nation and right here in Georgia, parents are now weighing whether or not they'll vaccinate their young children. It comes as Pfizer seeks emergency authorization for its vaccine for children six months to four years old. Approval could come by March. Pfizer says the dosage is a tenth of the amount given to adults. Two to four year olds may need a third shot to be fully immunized. Whatever the guidance, parents are divided. Whatever we can do to make it a little bit safer and have a little bit more normal life. But I am looking forward to when I am comfortable and when I can protect my young child. According to a survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation, 31% of parents will get their child vaccinated right away. That's up from 20% in July. It's about 16 minutes after six and across the country, HBCU students are on edge after at least 13 campuses got bomb threats on the first day of Black History Month. Spelman College here in Atlanta was one of them. In fact, it was its second threat in two weeks. Police inspected the campus but did not find anything yesterday. Uh, Atlanta University Center students are taking these threats seriously. It's scary because there's already threats on black people's lives just in general, especially black women. So. It's, it's scary, but you, you can't just stop. You have to deal with it and keep going. Fort Valley State University near Macon also received a bomb threat, and Albany State in South Georgia was one of several HBCUs across the country to be threatened. A former NFL coach is suing the league in three teams alleging racial discrimination. Our Brooks Baptiste has been following this story for us, and Brooks, the league is defending its actions. Yeah, good morning to you guys. Former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores was fired just last month, and he filed that class action lawsuit Tuesday against the NFL in these three teams you see right here. And he claims racial discrimination within the league's hiring process for coaches and executives. Now, in the lawsuit, Flores accused Dolphins owner Steve and Ross of offering him $100,000 for every loss in an effort to get the number one draft pick back in 2019. Flores says that after refusing his owner's directive to tank, that led to some problems off the field. 
Flores also stated in the lawsuit that he was offered an interview with the New York Giants, even though they had no intentions of hiring him. He says the suit, uh, excuse me, the suit includes text messages between Flores and Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, where Belichick had congratulated him three days before the interview, but Belichick said it was sent in error because the messages were supposed to go to Brian Dable. Now, the suit alleges that the Giants only interviewed Flores to satisfy a mandate requiring teams to interview minority candidates. The NFL and Miami Dolphins have both released statements denying the allegations, saying they are proud of the diversity and inclusion throughout the organization. But I think it's important to note right now there is only one black head coach in the NFL. This morning on CBS Mornings at about 730, Flores is going to be opening up about these allegations in a sit down interview. And you can catch that interview right after Wake Up Atlanta. Guys. Yeah, this is uh, some some really serious allegations, Brooks. And I just want to point out the statement from Brian Flores, too. I understand that I may be risking coaching the game I love. So this is serious for him, too. He has a lot to lose yeah. uh, with this lawsuit. Brooks, thanks. We'll be looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Yep. Meantime, the Washington football team is set to announce its new name and logo today. The team acknowledged its old name was hurtful, and it says the new brand is not going to include any nickname linked to Native American imagery. Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and our streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.